15 years ago, I was riding bicycles a lot. Um, I've always ridden bicycles for a lot of my life. I haven't even had a car, just a bicycle. Uh, at that time I was training, so we were leaving maybe four o'clock in the morning in winter, riding for a couple of hours, like getting back sometimes at 11 in the, in the morning, which means that you go from absolutely freezing to really warm, especially after riding a bicycle for that long. So what I, what I, what I would do in the morning is stuff newspaper in my cycling gear so that I could dispose of it later. So that was the starting point of thinking about these ideas. Then later on, I was thinking, well, if, if this is such a good insulator that it can keep me warm, how are we going to take it further? Come in. So now this is the kind of factory you're going to have in two years' time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let me, let me show you what we do here. Okay, well, on the, on the other side there, we've got the stuff for stretch. And then here's the stuff for straight sewing. Okay, so sometimes we've got like nearly all these machines, depending on the work, but with COVID, it's been a bit more quiet. So sometimes we've got more, more we've got like, twi like, twi like close to 20 machinists. Okay. Yeah. And then pressing here, that's it. we only keep up to three. Okay, so, so what happens is we get make, it comes here for quality control and finishing off. Well, it actually starts at cutting. cutting so yeah. we start with cutting and actually starts obviously with patterns. We start with cutting and then from there it comes through and then Gaston, Gaston puts, puts it because he knows who the machinists are. So when lockdown came, as I'm sure you all remember, we were told on Tuesday by Thursday we were going to be under lockdown. This was quite a scary prospect for me because I have a lot of workers, as you can see, in the factory. So what lockdown meant is for however long the lockdown was, people weren't going to get money for food. So from Tuesday to Thursday, I made my factory like a, um, we got uh, washing up things. We turned this into a kind of, let's say, like a hostel, the factory, and we started making masks. So we had from Tuesday to Thursday to do everything for that job. Um, it was simply that, like, like work out something to do and keep my staff busy and fed or close, lock, uh, lock down like everyone else and, well, there's no money. Cool, Claire, Gaston. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Let me Ga put uh, my mask on. Mask, yeah. <laughs> Gaston is the Not boss. The right the boss yeah. He's the boss of this place. Yeah. I found out that the nurses were not getting protective wear. Uh, they had to buy their own, uh, like scrubs and things. They weren't allowed to use their uniforms, but they had to buy their own. And I thought that's totally unacceptable because doctors were getting, because of how our society views the importance of doctor. A doctor is way more important than a nurse, except the nurse is on the front line much more than the doctor. So then I made a project. That's how Tony and I connected in the end is I made a, uh, we made scrubs. So I designed like a more respectful scrub for a South African lady, specifically nurse, to wear. Carlo had started this project um, on his own steam last year during, um, during lockdown. He was doing all sorts of amazing things to, to try and use his skills and capabilities to make people's lives a bit better. Um, in fact, the big project that he did was he, he redesigned scrubs for nurses um, that were working in the COVID ICU units because they weren't allowed to wear their uniforms anymore. Um, and I guess from my perspective, I was, I was on the search for, doing, for trying to figure out a way to connect people who were doing amazing things to try and figure out how to actually make it work. And um, my brother, who's a friend of Carlo's, put us in touch. And um, Carlo had this idea a few years ago to make this jacket. And it was a jacket that was wearable, that could also turn into a sleeping bag, and that could help people who were living rough on the streets. And I think it was something that was percolating in his head. And you've probably seen enough of him on the on this um, documentary to understand how his head percolates. There's millions of ideas going on and 
he um we sat down in february 2021 when we first met and started chatting and all these ideas and and um symbiotic thoughts and values started coming out through talking with the community I mean, the starting point was using newspaper to insulate people, but through talking to the community, what I'm finding is actually we might be on a very different track altogether. All we've got to do potentially is keep the wind from making the people cold. So what we, we made this lining like this, but we're learning from the guys on the street that we don't have to. You can put things in here. But what we're learning is actually that's not so practical for them. They don't use it as much. So what they're using the jacket for, we thought they'd use it as a blanket. But what they're using it for is a windbreaker. So they put their, their blankets they put inside here. So all this extra work that we've been making, we can, we, we can eliminate and invest it in other parts of the jacket. Yeah. Like putting reflective strip on maybe yeah. for them. We have inspired the making of this jacket when I walk around these neighborhoods. These guys are going to be on the left. Oh, I walked there probably two or three times past them a week at least. Because there's fabric shops up there. So the fabric shops are going to go right past them. But sure, they're living in a crazy condition. Because it seems like they're all drug addicts. Because I often actually see them with, with needles in their arms, passed out with the syringes still in their arms. So. It's not a guess, it's a, it's a fact, it's not here. Yeah. Here on the left you'll see them. And sure man, I feel sorry for them because they must get freezing sometimes, like really freezing. How about you? How do I feel? It is when I'm more so you can help other people. I'm all at your disease or what I'm on. But did, did they ask you maybe recently if those jackets are coming, when are they coming? Uh, they they ask me, they ask me, they must because yeah. they feel cool. They are going to manage my property now. Now we have a phone, now we have a phone, now we have a phone, now we have a phone. Love is free. <laughs> because you are very happy, you know, my brother, yeah. for everything. You know. this one I'm happy to help thing. you. Very beautiful. I like this one. It's a very important thing, I think, with this kind of project is that the communities get to speak about their problems and they get to help make solutions to their problems. Because in the end of the day, someone who sleeps on the, the street for 15 years, sometimes even a lot more than that, He's definitely got a better idea than me who sleeps in a nice bed with warm blankets. We registered a non-profit company called Make Good, Colab SA, which is trading as Make Good, and just started all the back-end businessy stuff. And Carlo did his first part of the project, which was um, designing the jacket. And then we looked at it and tried to figure out, you know, what what was superfluous, what we needed to put in, what would work better. And um, then he made a couple and we took them out into the community and asked people to try them out. And, um, and each time we do that, each time we hand out the jackets and people get to test them out for us and come back with some feedback so that we understand what works better for them. So that the project itself is constantly in design. Um, and what it helps do at the same time is um, gave us a bigger picture of what it is that we wanted to do and that's to create things that help people in communities by connecting creative people, makers, artisans, people who have these capabilities, factories, amazing skills that they have. Um, connecting them with funding and connecting them with the people that needed it. Make Good um, was uh, like from, di from Tony and I directly like talking to each other about how we felt about things and how COVID changed us. What I learned in, in Tony too, I, I believe, is that through COVID we learned to be more together. Like before COVID, I didn't realize how much together we need to be to be healthy and strong. COVID really taught me that being together makes you healthy and strong, not being apart. So through those talks with Tony, we realized that you 
you know, like small actions can end up being bigger and bigger things. So we're on the journey of doing small actions one at a time until we get there. <laughs> you do it small ways. Yeah. Whatever you, it's a step at a time, each one. The small you do, the small I do, the small the next person do comes together. I agree with that 100%. And also, sometimes people think, oh, it's so small, so they do nothing. Nothing, yeah. What must they do? But actually, a small thing can be very big for someone. True, true. The idea was that insulation, that, that insulation um, does not have to weigh you down and keep you, keep. So, what if the insulation that's going to keep you warm is disposable? What if you can throw it away? What if it's like recyclable? What if it's, if it's dirty, you throw it away and replace it with something else? What if it's insulation from your community, like where you stay, on the street? Go and scratch in the dustbin and you find newspaper. So they would have come forward. Yeah, yeah. How can you call them from newspaper or something? Yeah, something is Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, sure, sure. It's a sort of a sleeping bag at the same time. Sure, yeah, sleeping bag for Yeah, Okay, okay. Then I have to get inside. Ah, okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's where they live. Sometimes there's maybe about six of them. And in the morning, often there's more, like. Uh, when they wake up. Uh, but they wake up late. But sometimes they don't seem to wake up at all. I can say 10,000 jackets won't even be a lot. Yeah. There's such a big need. Yeah. There's such a, a big need. A lot of people. Yeah. And especially with COVID, yeah. the problem I think is escalated now. People don't have jobs, they're on the street. Like, why wouldn't you want to be a part of this? Why wouldn't you want to change the world like this? Yeah. And then it's your jacket, all your belongings are still here with you. Yeah. Guys, this is, this is amazing. This is super, super amazing. And, um, you know, just also being a radio presenter and also being very, very passionate about, you know, community engagements, community improvements, young people believing and giving them hope. I, I firstly all believe that we're all human, 1.1. Yeah. 1 1. I don't care whether you're in the streets, you're in a corner, you're under a bridge, you're in a home, in a mansion, in Kukuini, wherever, guys. I just believe that it's very important as human beings to to think out of the box, man. This is not even thinking out of the box anymore. This is thinking yeah, is beyond bad. the box. Yeah. yeah this is very, 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 very amazing. It's really, really cold, especially this winter. We're already hitting third wave. Um, these people need, they need, genuinely, genuinely need these, I don't even know how to call them, jackets, <laughs> uh, beds, <laughs> bags. Homeless homes. Yeah, so th <laughs> this, this is an actual homeless home. So Carlo Gibson was a past student from maybe 15, 20 years ago when we were at the old Wits Technicon. He was a student first, did his... Um, visual arts diploma and then he did a diploma in fashion design so he had two diplomas and he contacted me last year to say he wants to come back and study and do his masters and part of that would be to really look at his own practice 
as a fashion designer, but as an artist and look at the interface between fashion and art. So Carlo was invited back, but because he did his uh, qualification so long ago, he had to do a honors before he can do his master's. So we accepted him into our honors program after many years. So we all knew Carlo back from when he was a student. Learning about community engagement has been quite important and special to me. I mean, as, as a designer, I have to do that to a degree, but it's usually in the lines of work, work-related community, like maybe uh, corporate uniforms. Yeah. So that part I've done quite often. But this really uh, engaging with community needs has been quite a new experience. Like this COVID experience has been a lot of learning. So part of the honors program, uh, all our students have to do community engagement and they have to do work placement as an internship. Now, Carlo, of course, has been a professional, but he had to do community engagement. So all the students attend my course on participatory action research methods. What is participatory action? How do you work with community engagement in a very um, user supported way. So you don't go and do a research on people. You have to include people in the research. And Carlo um, had suggested that he had just started in COVID his um, Make Good program. And Make Good was really looking at ways of supporting people during COVID and made masks. Um, he had this idea about homeless people um, and supporting something for them. So we decided to work with all the students and it included the honor students from art therapy and the honor students from visual arts. How I got involved in this project uh, was through, so one of the modules we have is um, professional practice and within professional practice, um, we have research methods, so um, the brief we got from research methods was sort of to go out, identify a problem, and apply what we call participatory action research. Um, so you're we fortunate enough to have Carlo, who had already had an idea that had to do, that had and has to do with, with the issue of homelessness. So. One of the things that Carlo proposed is that we use his, his idea of homeless, the Homeless Project. Um, he was interested in designing this jacket come sleeping bag. And so the way we would get all the students involved is to start gathering the research. What are people needing? And to go out and interview people to find out what their needs are on the street. And that would feed ways of supporting the campaign that Carlo started. So that's how they got involved. Uh, some of the students, we had a different idea of how the students would support Carlo, but Carlo uh, is a person who is an activist. He gets things done. He likes action. He likes it now. I think the pace of students at UJ was far too slow for him. He was very frustrated. We couldn't get the information and the support he needed in time. So we separated the projects and we say, Carlo, just do what you have to do and keep your deadlines. He wanted to deliver before the, the cold of winter, where students, as you know, being one of them, take their own time. So they weren't in as big a rush as Carlo. So we separated it out so that their interviews, their photo voice project would basically supplement Carlo's project. In these kind of projects, practicality is 99.9. .9. Aesthetics is 0 0.01. Mm. But of course, you want to try and do both, right? That's the designer's job. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and make it happen so that it's not just functional, but that there's pride in what people are well, wearing. And... <laughs> I've really been enjoying that about going back onto the streets and finding people wearing it.
and how they wear it and how they style it up themselves. Like a practical thing to keep them warm and then they've restyled it, cut off this and redone that and yeah. folded the sleeves in such a way. What they're wearing underneath it. I mean, even though even though the guys don't have very much, they still got a sense of style yeah. and individuality. Carlo is a doer. He likes to get things done. He has no patience for waiting for people to, to come up with the goods. He goes ahead. So I think he's a professional in that way. So, you know, he, we gave him the space um, and say, go for it, just do it. And that, that's great. I think he's, I said to him, one of the things I'd like him to do is role model how you are a professional in the field for the students. And so to give him that space, we separated the two kind of outcomes, Carlo's outcome and the student's outcome. So they both work with participatory research, but they contribute equally to the project. You know, when you go to the mall, you just focus on your business and you go out and I think this, this process, what I've learned throughout this process is that People are human and people have their own, you know, journeys and they they actually have a life and it's not, it shouldn't be dismissed, you know, and I think that it sort of opened my eyes a lot with that because you go to the mall, you focus on your business, they ask for money, you say, no, I don't have now, or you give them something or, and it's just that dismissive interaction when no one really pays attention and you know, come to a realization that these people are human and they have much of a voice or much of a, you know, stance in this world as I do. So I think that's what I've, I've learned to kind of value that. I can see um, in this project, well, actually two ways for me to go about it. I also not communicate too much and do my part of the jobs or learn to communicate on a broader level with more people. So I've noticed it's not, it's not my strength, I don't think at all, actually. I never had to really put it to a test because I have tight people around me who understand what I need to do and what, why I'm doing it and my intentions behind that because we've been working a long time. So to see me repeatedly doing the same things, inviting new people into it, I don't necessarily have the communication skills to explain to them. And they don't have the history with me to understand me. So yeah, that's something, that was a good learning. So Make Good is Carlo's initiative. We added a UJ logo because of the collaboration we wanted with the university. So one of the ways, a material way we could support is that I have a research fund for community engagement, a small fund where I used to take students on trips where we would pay for cameras developing and so what we could do is order the fabric or some of the fabric for the um, the bag sleeping bag make good project so that was a 5,000 rand in-kind contribution to the project we also suggested that all the students put it on their social media We've put it on the UJ social media, the, the um, Greater Sub Media, also FADA Media. Um, we've supported the fundraising campaign as best as we can as individuals and as a department. And just by publicizing it and supporting it, also Carla will get credit for, for this project. So in that way, this project becomes a, a project that is in partnership with the university. And so I think that partnership is, I think, something we're proud of. I think it's great. It's great for students to have a, you know, a campaign like this that is so meaningful and, and impactful by, or he's already given out 50 and will give out another 50 um, jackets which has way exceeded his first intention. And, and it's absolutely fantastic project. I think it's a, it's, it's a real role model for us.
So we are very excited to be part of it. I've always been sympathetic, but because um, I mean, also just when we started it out, it was quite triggering for me because um, the way to think about it was like the way to think around the problem of homelessness is to provide people with homes, but um, as students and, and and just in light of you know we don't we don't really have the means to build them houses, but then we were able to make them jackets, right? So. So, so in the beginning, it was a lot of giving and taking, but then I got to go into, into the process. I think it's a very important initiative we started, and I think it's a great project for students to develop each year. It's sad, and it's sad that our society can allow for this to be almost acceptable. But this is, this is acceptable for what does it say about all of us and our civic understandings? But I have to say to you, I'm really, I do really see fortune in myself, like you. Yeah. Same, I do see it as well. Sure, man. And as any one of us, I wonder if sometime, like in reincarnated versions, we get to experience these crazy things. Like, how, how does it happen that some people get to do it and other people get an easy, an easy journey, you know? Having color back in our system is a real asset. We're very excited to work with him. He's very driven. Um, he has a vision and he's a great practitioner. So, so it's great. And we'll work with him as best as, you know, we, we can. In order to donate to the project, there are a few ways. The first is that we've got a Backer Buddy site. Um, the second is through our website, we, our bank details are on there, and also we have a snap scan if people want to use their credit cards. Um, the other alternative is to get in touch with us if you wanted to place a bulk order. If there was a specific person that you want to donate a jacket to, then you can arrange to buy it and collect it from us. Um, also bulk orders and what we would like to do which we um, are still in the process of trying to figure out how to do is add on the sponsorship onto that where people can also contribute um, self-care and personal items like toothpaste and soap and face masks things like that that we'll be able to add as an add-on to the homeless home jacket. Anyway, about the jacket, I'm feeling very well because now when I'm sleeping, my ribcages are okay, my shoulders are okay. Also the material, I feel like it's more, more, more warm. You see, that makes me happy. I'm feeling happy about this jacket. If anyone wants to get involved, um, then to email us on info at make-goods.co.za and whatever, we would love um, help in sourcing things and manpower and distributing jackets. Oh man, I love interacting with, 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 with people generally, but the guys on the street, oh, they're very special to interact with. They're very um, generous, kind, open-hearted and warm. Um, yeah, on this project, I have done other things where people on the street have not been those things, but in this project, that's all I've encountered so far. It's like absolute like warmth and kindness and gratitude, like so much gratitude um, just for me doing my, a little job, my little job in the smallest way, that, like just what we know how to do. And then the gratitude is enormous. Also, I mean, from that straight point of view, the things that I have to learn from the people on the street are enormous as well. It's very beneficial to ask people questions, like any question. It's not just about being warm. It's like, how did you get on the street? What happened? Like, what are your needs when you're on the street? Okay, this starts, I mean, at the beginning of this project, I was also looking at uh, uh, written stuff on what home means even learning about what home means. We all live in a home and we're happy to live there, but we don't really understand the depth of what home gives you. It's an enormous thing to have a home.
I would be a total hypocrite if I didn't mention our website is www.make-good.co.za and from there everything else can be found. Our social media accounts, the crowdfunding platform, all of that.